we're ready. Yeah, it says here live preparing, but it doesn't say. Uh, oh, meeting is now streaming. Live live. Already. We might. We're gonna check right now. That's what it says on my my screen here. Are you in the in the real estate network group? Right. Yes. Right. Um. No, it says it on my Zoom. Oh, well, really? we, we're live actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we are here. We just had to find a way to bring uh, Trevor back. But hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Real Talk with Real Estate Investor Show. And um, sorry it took us a little bit to get live in here, but we're just having some technical issues. You know how Facebook and Zoom work. It's complicated. But anyway, um, we're here live. We're just waiting for uh, Trevor to jump in here so we can um, start the show, guys. We have a very special guest today. I'm going to introduce him right here in a second. Just let me find Trevor. Trevor! <laughs> Where are you, man? Let me find you. Something is going on here. I'm telling you, man, this, this shit is so complicated. <laughs> um, let me... Um, we are live. I just need to bring Trevor back. <laughs> anyway, we're going to wait for uh, Trevor's going to jump here in a second. So we're just going to start rolling. And uh, so again, welcome, guys. Uh, in today's episode, we have Evan. And um, he's a great guy. We were having a conversation right before we started the show. And um, he is in the real estate in war for almost, what, 10 years? More than 10 years already, right? Yeah, on and off the, yeah, yeah. Awesome, yeah. And uh, so he started around 2007. Uh, around 2010, he found himself uh, almost $1 million in debt. But at the end, he figured out how to get out of that situation. And he just kept moving forward and, you know, doing what a good uh, entrepreneur does, just pushing forward. And uh, after he recovered himself, he finally decided to get back in the game after he got tired of his uh, job, six figures job, if I can recall right, huh? Yeah. yeah. So uh, then he just get back in the game of the real estate and now he's just crushing it, you know? And while he's not selling homes or finding deals, he's kicking ass, climbing mountains, semi uh, naked, you know, <laughs> and having a lot of fun or just enjoying his time with his wife and, and daughter. So welcome Evan to the show. Glad you're Thank here, you. man. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So um, tell us a little bit about your background, man, so people can know exactly where you're coming from and, and a little bit about your journey. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up, you know, regular middle class life uh, in suburban New Jersey. Um, I went to uh, college uh, actually around here in uh, Pennsylvania, Southeast PA, just outside of Philly. Um, and when I was about 23, right after I got my first corporate job, I was um, commuting back and forth. I was still living at home with my parents. And I said, you know, hey, this whole work thing just isn't going to work out for me. And they looked at me and started laughing. And I just, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I just didn't want to go, you know, I didn't want to work for somebody else. I didn't want to be in that corporate, corporate environment. Um, so actually a couple of years later, um, I moved, I had the opportunity to move to China um, I actually lived in China for a few years um, when I came back. That was like around the time I started reading all the Rich Dad, Poor Dad books that everybody else probably knows about. Um, I, I, while I was in China, um, you know, I did, I did a lot of, you know, cool things over there. Um, it was just kind of like an experience, but I still wasn't, I still was working for other people. I still didn't really know how to do anything, um, you know, entrepreneurial and I came back, I got, I got into real estate. I started buying um, surround properties. I bought them in, in the worst areas of the worst places. Um, didn't know what I was doing. I wish I had a mentor back then. Um, I ended up getting into almost a million dollars in debt and going almost bankrupt, but I did not want to go bankrupt. So I was able to, um, I don't know, maybe it was just like a pride thing at the time. Um, but I, uh, I was able to negotiate uh, and pay off. I pay anybody I owed money personally to, I paid them back in full. Any, but any bank or creditor, I ne I negotiated, um, and, uh, was able to settle off everything. And then I was basically, 
um, kind of knocked myself out of the real estate industry at that point. Um, and then I got into sales. Um, I was in sales for a long time. I was doing um, in-home sales, um, selling like anything from security systems to home remodeling. Um, I learned a lot in that business. I definitely think that selling is a skill that is necessary for, for being an entrepreneur. It's one of the most important skills. Um, and I knew I needed to get back into real estate. So around 2016, I actually found somebody else who um, I found a couple guys who um, I, I had known um, and they were in the real estate business. And so we started doing wholesaling. Well, they, they had already been doing wholesaling and they kind of like that with me. Um, so I just started doing wholesaling. And, you know, since then I've been doing it, um, you know, either with myself or with partners ever since then. And now I'm, I'm pretty much on my own doing my own thing. Please. Very nice, That's man. Awesome. <laughs> Trevor's Tra taking a walk. I, I decided, uh, yeah, I decided to <laughs> join y'all here. I don't know if you could see my little walk going on here, but uh, yeah, looks like I'm coming through here, okay. And I apologize, I'm a little bit late to the party here, so I missed a little bit of the beginning of that. But um, so we we're, we're at the point the rich, and they handed me everything. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Obviously, you went through some stuff, man, you know, and you had to go through a couple of hoops to get to where you are now, but I know that you're crushing it, right? And uh, so tell us a little bit about what you, you've obviously been wholesaling for, for quite some time now, and you've been successful with it. Tell us a little bit about what you've got going on right now with your current business and, um, you know, just kind of elaborate it, you know, with a little bit of what you got going on currently. So currently, um, so I have a, uh, a 10 month old daughter and I bring that up because, um, you know, my wife and I had her last year. And so we, we, we also moved a couple months ago. So last year was, was mainly focused on, um, you know, getting set up with the, with the baby, making those types of adjustments and, and moving and everything. Now that we are kind of settled in a little bit, actually, my wife is helping me a lot. Um, with the marketing and which is great. So now we're just you know, trying to implement, um, you know, different, different marketing, increase the marketing so we can get more deals going. And I'm also um, building a um, rental portfolio. So I hadn't, I hadn't bought rental properties in a long time. The last time I did that, I went, you know, belly up. So now I'm, I'm older and wiser and trying to do it the right way, or at least a, a, a better way. Um, so I'm doing everything from, you know, raising private money, um, buying these properties and, um, you know, getting them stabilized, having renters, you know, cash out refi, all that, all that good stuff. So, um, and then eventually um, would, would like to go into bigger units, you know, like do the monopoly thing where you get four houses and then you get a hotel. Yeah, that's right, man. Absolutely. Now you brought up something uh, really cool that I think that a lot of our audience members, you know, can relate to. Uh, either with the folks that are looking to get into the business or the folks that are already in it and, and having trouble scaling the business or getting to that next level. And that's that, man, you're not single. You got a, you got a wife, a kid and, 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 and the whole family thing going on as well. And so, you know, obviously, you know, that's something that, 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 you know, you have to do, devote a certain level of time to every single day to keep things happy, you know, for everybody and so forth. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, your time management and how you kind of, allow everything to kind of flow as it should so that, you know, everybody's not in a mess and everybody's not upset, you know? Yeah. I mean, so I, I have a, a saying about it and I, I don't think I came up with it, but it's that you don't manage time. You can't manage time. You only manage your activities during the time. So um, it's just, it's just a matter of doing that. It's, uh, you know, just getting on a schedule every day. I wake up around six o'clock. Um, my daughter wakes up around, um, usually between 6.30 and 7, I'll, I'll wake her up. If she's not up by 7, I'll wake her up. And then I spend a couple hours with her. Um, and then we have a nanny that comes over. And then, you know, we start we start doing work around 10 o'clock, 9, 10 o'clock. And then we'll, you know, do stuff from 10 till, 10 till 4, 10 till 5. And then, um, the, uh, and then we, you know, hang out with my daughter a little bit and then put her, put her back down to bed and, or, and, then, uh, and then do some more work until probably, you know, 7, 8, 9 o'clock at night. Um, so it's kind of like there's different like blocks that I have throughout the day. Um, but that's, that's what works for me. Um, you know, works for my family. So it's like, whatever, whatever you need to do, I would suggest blocking it off. I actually met someone, um, recently at, at the apex event and he showed me how he blocked off everything, um, and how he does his schedule and how he has like reoccurring, 
every week he's got about 20 to 25 hours of reoccurring things, whether it's going to the gym, um, spending time with your family, taking um, appoint, you know, appointments with your clients, could be prospecting, cold calling, anything like that. Do it, do it during certain times and block it off and always do that kind of stuff. And then that way it'll, you know, then you'll have time um, in between to do whatever else comes up. That's awesome, man. Now you said, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that your wife is also active, active in the business as well. You guys are kind of partners in the business. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We recently got into it uh, together. So she's, she's helping out. It's, it's been a huge help. Um, anytime you got a, a spouse that is, that is supportive and is like kind of diving in head first, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a great thing. Um, and the thing is like, we're not always like, um, we're not, uh, around each other all the time where like, we like being around each other. So that, that, that also helps too. No doubt. Um, <laughs> he does, he does, um, you know, one thing and I, I do another thing. She she does one thing that she's good at or a bunch of stuff that she's good at. And I focus on the things that I'm, I'm good at. And then the stuff that we're not good at, you know, we, we kind of figure out together. That's awesome. You no, know, you mentioned something. Um, so in, in our group, we have a lot of people that um, we are, we have experienced wholesalers. We have people that are just starting in the industry. We have all kind of people in, in this group, you know, and um, when you, at the beginning, you, you, you mentioned something about how you went to your parents and you told them that you didn't want to have a job. You just wanted to do business and stuff like that, you know, and that kind of like resonates with me a lot because that's kind of like my background too with my parents where they wanted me to go and find a job, you know, and every opportunity that I try to have to start a business, they just tear them apart, you know, which I couldn't understand why, because my dad, he's a business owner. He has his own company. So it's kind of like, like you are this kind of person. You tell me not to do this. Look, that's kind of weird. But uh, my point is when you find yourself in that situation, it's hard to change that in your mind and, and it's hard to get full of fear and, and insecurity and why you should do next, how you can get to that point where you can start your own business, be independent, being an entrepreneur and not uh, get orders from nobody. So tell us more how you overcome that, you know, uh, in your life. Well, it, it, it took a long time to, to do that. Um, you know, it was like one, one of the, one of the first things that I, I did when I was right out of college is I went to Europe, um, for two months. So I think traveling helps because you get to see a bigger picture of the world. You get to see how other people live and how, how they do different things. Um, you know, and then I ended up move, moving to China, um, you know, it was like some of these things were just, I, I don't want to say they were like in, um, to say to my parents, you know, Hey, look at me, I, I can do this. You know, it was like, I wanted, I'm sure that was maybe part of it, but it was also, I wanted to go see, see the world and see, um, see what else is out there. Um, in terms of, um, you know, being an entrepreneur and, and, and doing it on my own, it, it, it took me a long time to get to that point, it was really like a couple of years ago. I mean, uh, up until that time, I was really like, you know, in sales, I wasn't able to kind of like generate revenue on my own. I was always able to sell. Like I've always had, I've, I spent a good amount of time learning how to sell and getting really good at it, but it's not really the sales. It's, it's the marketing. And this is one of the things that uh, I'm sure everybody who watches this knows Ryan Stuman. He talks about if you own the leads, if you're able to generate the leads, then you can run the, run the business. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm really more focused on now is learning how to generate, you know, leads because all the other stuff is just kind of, you know, I I'm familiar with all the other stuff. I'm familiar with the sales process. I'm familiar with how to, how to close the deal, how to find buyers for it or, or, or whatever kind of business it is. You know, it's like, you know, there's some type of systems operations, you know, whether it's like an installation or, or anything like that, customer service, follow up and, and, and those things. But, but the, the most important thing is, is to learn how to get, get the leads. And like, that was one thing that I was, I think afraid uh, of learning how to do because I just, I just didn't know how to do it. And like, I don't, I don't think it's taught in a lot of schools. I don't think it's taught in a lot of different places, but it, but it certainly should be. It's just, you know, at a, at a very basic level, it's, it's just door knocking, you know, going on, knocking on, you're knocking on people's doors or just getting in front of their face on social media um, you have to let people know what you're doing in order to get them to be interested in, in um, you know, what, what type of product or service that you have to offer. And, 
And is that is that typically traditionally how you found most of your deals? Was it a lot of door knocking or, or driving for dollars per se, skip tracing things of that nature, or did you have another mechanism that you found worked a little bit better than others? Um, no, I mean, it, so in the, in the last couple of years, it's been I I haven't really done any any door knocking. I mean, I've done it like a couple of times, but um, it's been like direct mail. Um, you know, when it first started a few years ago, that's kind of trickling off. Now it's like Facebook ads, um, Google ads, um, Facebook group, you know, could be posting in Facebook groups, could be word of mouth, ringless voicemail, uh, text messaging, all, all, you know, there's, there's various different types. And it's like, and it's kind of crazy how, like how fast it's evolving, you know, cause like last year you could send ringless voicemails this year. You can't send any ringless voicemails. You got to drop text. So it, it, it's weird, man. And, and, and the thing of it is, and I know that we've had conversations about this kind of on the side. And, and one of the things that we definitely agree on is that there's more competition out there these days than, than probably than ever. And, and a lot of the reason being is because, you know, there's, there's so much money to be made, right? You know, you can't blame folks for, for wanting to, to, to enter the industry. I mean, it's, it's a lucrative industry, but the idea of it is to, to find mechanisms and, and techniques that not necessarily everybody else is using or applying so that you can get to those deals and obviously negotiate that deal and, and ultimately hopefully make it a, the deal a little bit juicier and fatter because you didn't have to worry about the competition undercut you and so forth. So um, would you, what would you say to somebody, I guess, that's just looking to get into the industry right now, you know, that doesn't really have a whole lot of experience, uh, really doesn't have their first deal under their belt or anything like that. Uh, you know, somebody that's, that's, you know, I use the, the word maybe scared or timid or, or fearful of, of going into something that, that they don't know, you know, how would you encourage somebody to, to go out there and just take action and do it? And what would you, what, what technique would you recommend that them get started with in order to find their first deal? Uh, hire me as a coach. Boom. Um, I like that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Either that or get out of my industry. Um, <laughs> it's it with, I, mean, I mean, you're not wrong, you know. I mean, yeah. uh, I don't remember who said who said these about, um, you, know, you cannot make all the mistakes, you know. That's why you have coaches. Also, we have mentors that can actually guide you, walk you through the, through, through the steps that you need to have to implement and win in life, right? So I'm, I'm agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was speaking with somebody last night and he was talking about how um, – he, you know, he's watching all these videos and he, you know, he knows what, that he needs to do this. He needs to do that. I can hear the lack, lack of confidence in his voice when he's telling me this stuff. And like, if you're going to do anything, you got to have confidence. And the way that you get confidence is you, you start doing something and you, and you win at it, right. You, you, or you become successful at it, whether it doesn't matter how small it is. Um, and so he's telling me he's got analysis paralysis. And I, and I like knew that kind of stuff by, by talking to him. But I said to him, like, like you need a coach. Like, and it doesn't have to be me, but you need, you need somebody to kind of like hold you by the hand and, and you know, guide you through this whole thing. Because like you, you know, I said, do you have a contract? And he's like, well, yeah, it's like, you know, I, I think I got it in a Google Drive, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm like, well, like, let me give you an example. Like, so I have, a, I have a contract. I have five contracts in the, in, in my car, they're in my back seat, in the, in the, in the pocket in the back, in my back seat. So like, if I'm driving down the street and I see a for sale by owner and I, and I call them up and they're home and I, I just run over there and, and get them to sign a contract. Like, do you know how to do that? And he's like, no. I'm like, well, that, that like, that's why, that's exactly why you need a code. You watch all these stupid videos, but unless you've got somebody to kind of like, like point you in the right direction and show you these basic fundamentals, um, you're not going to do anything. So you got, you got to the fundamentals. You got to start net. So yeah, to, to kind of answer your question, like start networking, go out to like real estate networking, meeting groups, um, join the Facebook groups. Um, but ultimately you know, hire a coach to, to show you how to do this stuff. And, and like it, you know, coaches are going to charge you anywhere from probably, you know, on the low end, a thousand bucks, you know, for like a course to, you know, thousands of dollars, maybe even tens of thousands of dollars. But if you don't have that money to pay for it, you're, you're probably not going to do what you need to, what needs to be done. 
you know, and you never will either, you know, yeah, if you don't you explore the opportunities or figure out a way to get it right. Cause the right. year or two goes, year or two passes and you're in the same exact boat where, okay, well, I never, I never found a way to get to that next level. But I'll tell you what, one thing that I would, I'm, I'm in agreement with you, man. If for the folks that are listening that haven't done a deal yet, man, partner with somebody, stop thinking, okay, well, I'm going to have to give away some profits, you know, to, to get a deal done. We, that's cool because you're not going to have any deals if you don't find somebody to walk through the process, right? right. Do right. a couple few, you, get, you know, get to know the process, get to know the lingo, figure out how to do repairs or not how to do repairs, but how to factor repairs, how to factor an ARV, how to find the deals, how to do all of this, work a few with somebody and then, you know, kind of separate and say, Hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm confident enough to go out there and get this deal on my own. But people sometimes I think, you know, outside of the action and, and the mindset and, and the fear and so forth, they start thinking about a monetary value. Well, uh, I don't want to give up 50% of my deal, or I don't want to spend $500,000 for somebody to teach me something that I can know I can find on YouTube for free or something like that. Okay. Well, cool. Well, why didn't you do that? You know, like take the action, take the mindset, streamline the process, and you'll go 10 times faster than if you try to do it on your own, because probably what will happen is it's, Again, you'll either wait, use 10 times as much time trying to get to where you're going, or you'll use a tenth of the time, give up, figure out that, hey, you know, this is too hard or this is never going to work. And then, then you, you never were able to capitalize on what you were trying to do in the beginning anyway, right? Yeah. So, um, well, shoot, man, I know that you, you've got a lot of things going on with, with the real estate and the investing and you're building your portfolio. But one of the one of the reasons too that we wanted to have you on as a uh, as a guest to the show too, man, is you've got a couple other things that I thought were very intriguing. You know that I think our our audience uh, would like to know more about as well. And you know, a couple of the things for me is number one, man, I got your book handed to me a, a couple months ago. I thought that was the funniest shit ever. I know me and Pedro were actually sitting around. I think it was uh, what, Pedro. Was that my Super Bowl party or what? That me no, and that was where, were sitting around uh, reading it, just dying laughing. Yeah, I think it was for the Super Bowl party. Yeah, yeah it was one of those days. But <laughs> so, and, and and I know that you know, to you, for the folks that are listening, he wrote this super funny book. You know, it's a it's a cartoon book. You know, uh, and he's also been a comedian and so forth. So we're talking to a dude that's hilarious. You know, how did you come up with that book idea, and how did that come about, and what you know, what made you want to write it, and and, and how can folks find it? <laughs> well, th that that was done about 10 years ago, and it was done under a pen name. In case I ever run for president, it can't get traced sure. back to me. Sure. Because um, it's a pretty obscene, you know, thing, as you guys know. But um, I was... Uh... So you didn't write that is what you're saying. Okay. I like the joke that it was, uh, you know, God told me to t to to write. <laughs> um, but I mean, you know, it's just from the creativity within myself at the, at the time, it was just something that I I wanted to do, and I spent like twenty five grand creating that book. I had to hire an artist, and it was like one hundred twenty five dollars per illustration. And I'm oh, talking. Man edited you know everything with editing and the words and everything done like so that was that was like half of the cost and then i had to print all the books and i printed like three thousand copies of it and um i still have like several hundred copies in my basement and i've probably thrown out half of them so um <laughs> you spent some money to get that out so did it start with the book or did it start with the stand-up comedy like i started stand -up comedy? i started doing stand-up comedy wait what did i do no, it started with the book. I started, I believe I started with the book. And then later that year, like when the book came out, that's when I started doing stand-up comedy. And I, I was just doing stand-up comedy on like an amateur level, like doing open mic, mic stuff and like local comedy shows around me. I wasn't doing any like Comedy Central stuff. I gotcha. Yeah. And one of, the, one of the other things I thought was super intriguing that, that I actually relate to, and I know that we've not had a conversation about this yet, but is that, you know, the little bit of the MMA and the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu background. I understand you're a brown belt in, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, I actually hold a purple myself. Oh, nice. I for about 10 years in my in my younger days, I uh, got a chance to to, uh, 
to train and, and enroll with some of the, some world class athletes. In fact, my personal trainer was Danny Alvarez. I don't know if you're familiar with him I or Travis him. or Travis Luter. Yeah, yeah. Those were my trainers. Um, but I'd like to I'd like to hear a little bit more about that, you know, and, and how you got involved with that, and and you know, did you ever actually uh, do any cage fighting or anything like that, or or did, was it more so just kind of for a, a training and purposes and things like that? Um, so when I got my first corporate job out of college, um, that was the one where I told my parents that the work, the whole work thing wasn't going to work out for me. I met a guy there and his name was Marty. And he told me about this cage. He, he did jujitsu at the time and I didn't know what it was. And, um, and he said, you know, this, uh, you know, his instructor teaches this stuff where they like break people's arms and they like smash their <laughs> face in a cage and all this stuff. And I was like, wow, that like signed me up for that. Yeah. Right. You know? <laughs> so this was like you know back before like ufc was really popular before mm -hmm. you know, kind of got mainstream um so i just went i went to a class and, and i mean i was like i was pretty strong back then um i was probably the the strongest i was in my life at the time or, or pretty close to it and i mean i was getting beat by guys that were half my size and i couldn't do anything i didn't know what was going on so um you know i got hooked on it i got i got intrigued by it and, and I just started going more often and um and then I ended up moving to uh to China um and while I was over there I was uh there was like two Brazilian jiu-jitsu schools in China and they were both run well run, where I lived that there was one guy and he was a blue belt and that was it but he had a school and he was an American he was Taiwanese American but he lived in China um and uh he, he trained under Hoist Gracie originally um and he was just doing the best that he could out there. And now he's a black belt. Um, but uh, I just, you know, kept going to classes with him. And then there was um, some guy that he knew that, that ran like a local MMA event. And then like, he, like it didn't really exist at the time in China. So it was, this is like in 2006. So there was like only a couple of events at that time. So I, I wanted to do it. So I, I tried it out and I, uh, I ended up winning. Um, and, and now I'm undefeated in MMA. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, man. Go go out on top for sure, man. Well, right. I, I wanted great. to touch base on that, man. Cause I, again, you know, that's kind of, uh, you know, my previous life in, in another world, you know, so I really uh, always have a, a, a firm pre appreciation for any type of background, you know, when it comes to that and, and you know, and what it takes, you know, to, to earn something like a brown belt or you know, how much time and effort and, and hard work you have to put into there to get to that point. That's pretty cool, man. And uh, we actually had Bubba McCullough, uh, uh, Marlboro, excuse me, on a, a few weeks ago as well, which I'm sure you probably know. He's he's doing the, the bare knuckle thing, right? So um, okay. have, you, have, have you checked into that, the bare knuckle fighting championship? I've heard of it. Yeah, it's, it just came out probably about, I want to say in the last six months or so. But, um, you know, he's competing in that on pay-per-view, man. So I I love that we've all kind of got this going on within within our little group, man. Yep. Um, Pedro, yep. you there with us still? All right, brother. Hey, well, listen, you know, again, we want to say thanks for coming on the show today, man. You know, I I, I truly believe that that uh, that you've added a lot of value to our show today and encouraged a lot of folks to really. Uh, to really get into the industry and show that, hey, listen, you know, it, folks from all walks of life can, you can really start from anything and from scratch or, or regardless of what you're going through or anything, you can, you can be successful in this industry. It's just a matter of taking action, putting in the work. And like you said, and I think that it's a, it's a very valid point um, to, to find somebody to work with, you know, to, that'll coach you, that'll, that'll do a joint venture with you, that'll help you through your first few deals so that you can really go out there and, and really start crushing it. Um, but so we, we really appreciate you, you know, you, you uh, uh, share, sharing that info with us. Uh, I guess my last question for you um, would be, you know, how do folks find out or, you know, about your coaching program or, or hire you as a coach? And also, um, you know, I guess really, I just want to know how do, how do folks find out more about you? Oh, uh, you can just send me a, a message on Facebook. Send me a friend request. I, I don't know. I'm I'm close to my five thousand limit, but uh, just send me a message on Facebook. If you are interested in coaching? Um, I don't work with with 
everybody. I mean, I only work with like certain types of people. Like you got to have a certain foundation. Um, I, I kind of like, I like to compare it to basketball, right? So there's different levels of basketball. There's, there's, you know, children's basketball, you know, and then there's like, um, you know, uh, freshman JV varsity, um, and, uh, you know, college and, and, and the pros. And like, there's, it, it's kind of like that with sales, business and wholesaling, right? So if you don't have a foundation to, um, you know, to, to dribble and run and pass, like you're going to get trampled. Like you're not, you're not even going to, uh, a JV level in high school, you're not going to make it to the college level. You're not going to make it to the pros. Right. So um, if you do have a certain foundation for, you know, with like sales, um, marketing, even some type of real estate background, um, that, that, then you're more likely to succeed. And those are the types of people that I can help the most. If you have no foundation in any of that, you, you got to go get a job in sales and you got to kind of like make it work, you know, find your own way. Uh, but if you do already, you know, if you're like struggling to do a deal, if you've like already spent money on marketing and don't know what you're doing, that's the kind of person that I want who is already like, even if you just took a little bit of action, that's fine. I, I, if you got your foot in the door, I can get the rest of you through the door. Very nice. Hey, so basically bro, you want people. You like that, man? No, I just wanted to reinforce what he's saying about uh, people that uh, he coaches and just like literally you work with people that are action takers, which makes a lot of sense, you know, because yeah. that's, I'm sure that even that you as a coach, you want to make sure that your time is well invested in someone who wants to learn and grow and be successful in this industry. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have a guy who he's got, you know, the first three months he didn't do any deals, but that's because he was doing the marketing. He was doing, you know, getting, getting the stuff in place that he needed to do. He was getting leads. Um, but he was asking me what to do, you know, for this lead. What do I say? How do I handle this? Then he got stuff under contract. It, it, he guys in like probably about three months, he got stuff under contract. He had, he had two closings last month for 14 grand and he's got a 40 grand, uh, one in the pipeline, nice. which is, which is not normal. It's a home run, but <laughs> you know, three closing hey. 54 grand is, is, is more than what a lot of people make in a year. No doubt. Hey, you know, and a, couple awesome. of those, a couple of those home runs a year, man, along with a bunch of singles and doubles, man, makes for a nice living, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Sure. No, but that's awesome because it's only proves that you can definitely help others, you know, but I mean, it, it is a two way situation. Like you provide the help, but they have to provide also, also the discipline of taking action and implement everything that you teach. So it makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Yep. And, and that's great. You know, like the way you're helping people, I think is, it is a great way. And that's the whole purpose of why we all are entrepreneurs to help others. That's what we do in this show to bring some people that have experience in the industry so others can lose their fear of taking action and start implementing and, and really start living the life that they want to live, you know? Yeah. That, that's ultimately what it's about is, is, is having, having the lifestyle of your choosing in this world. I mean, there's no reason why in 2020, if you don't want to go to, uh, you know, get up and go, go to work, work for somebody else every day, you shouldn't have to do that. That's right. That's right. And there, there's ways around it. You just gotta, just gotta educate yourself and take action, man. Well, once yeah. again, Evan, I'd like to say thanks for coming on, man. We sure appreciate you. Uh, it's been a lot of help, man. And, and we're, we're tremendously grateful for having you on as a guest today. Um, is there anything you'd like to leave with our audience before, before we let you uh, let you go here and sign off? Yeah, I just want to say that's what I got to say. <laughs> that's right, man. <laughs> Sun's out, guns good, out, man. right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you for on. being here man yeah we appreciate yeah, you gonna drop your information in the comments too so people the people can reach out to you, you can just click in the link and go directly to you and reach out okay cool absolutely so thank you guys for watching thank you evan for being here and uh it was great to have another show and uh for the real estate investors uh network members make sure that you watch these again there's more videos uh that you can watch with other um guests that we had in the past and there's a lot of content in these videos already we have like maybe one ten, 10 or almost 10 episodes already i think that's enough content that you can uh i think about 12 or so yeah yeah go through those videos because there's a lot of information that i can help you get started or can help you improve uh, 
your business or that you can reach out to people like Evan that can actually help you and walk you to the steps that you need to implement to make sure you're building a successful business. So thank you guys for watching and uh, we will see you guys next week. Yes, sir. Take care. Thanks again. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care, guys. Later. Later.